low-lying areas in West Kalimantan and North Sumatra, Indonesia begin to see flooding during the rainy season. Master Zheng Yan visits government officials in Miao Li, who in turn make donations to Zhiji's vaccination fund. I'm Sean Scanlon. This is Dai Headlines. Let's get started. During the rainy season in Indonesia, many low-lying villages are covered in water. Zhiji volunteers from neighboring areas have launched emergency relief to deliver rice and daily necessities to affected residents. Here's more. All roads in the community are filled with sand and water. People can only walk through the water or use inflatable boats. This is the Kapupaitan Sudan Betagai in North Sumatra province, Indonesia. Since the end of October, the area has been flooded with heavy rain and rising tides. We have flooding here every year. The highest water level is about one meter. For some low-lying places, the water level can reach the height of an adult's chest. It has been more than half a month. It should be 16 days since the flooding happened. More than 2,000 households in eight villages were forced to evacuate and let daily necessities. So the volunteers rushed to help them. It has been three weeks since the day of the flood. The water level in my house once reached the height of my chest. Even now, after water resists, the water level is still the height of my thigh. Thank you so much for distributing supplies to us. We can't buy daily necessities at all. Indonesia is in its rainy season, and many provinces are experiencing substantial rainfall. Sidan Regency in West Kalimantan province has also been flooded. So the volunteers and military personnel had to take inflatable boats to distribute supplies to the affected residents. The houses around here are severely flooded because they are all close to the big river. Some people's houses are totally immersed in water, with only the roof being seen. So currently, these residents were all evacuated to shelters. Today, we took inflatable boats with the military personnel to distribute the supplies to people in need. Every household can get rice, cooking oil, and instant noodles. The affected residents are in need of tents. They can't go back because the water hasn't receded yet. The shelter has limited space and the privacy is not enough, so I hope everyone can donate what these survivors need. For the supplies delivered by the volunteers, part of them have been distributed to the survivors, while the rest will be handed over to the people in need by the military and the heads of the affected villages after water recedes. In Indonesia, the pandemic has eased and Ziji's assistance is ongoing. Once again, Ziji cooperated with the military to distribute rice along with residents to return to normal life as quickly as possible. Take a look. Ziji is cooperating with the military once again as 1,000 households will get 10 kilograms of rice to tide them over during this difficult time. Ten tons of rice have been distributed to the military command. We will assist in distributing it to the people who are needed supplies. Le Latul used to earn 30 U.S. dollars before the pandemic, but now she only makes just half of this daily income. I'm very thankful for this support. Otherwise, I would have to go out and buy this rice. Now, there's no need for me to buy it. Although this bag contains only 10 kilograms of rice, it should be enough to accommodate demand for a few days and lessen the economic hardships of many of the local residents here. This rice is donated by a kind-hearted Indonesian businessman who wants to support those suffering during the pandemic, helping them get back to normal life as soon as possible. During the pandemic, Zuji Philippines chapter continued to care for the disadvantaged. In Quezon City, they distributed rice and living supplies to scavengers and visually impaired individuals. Here's more. So the volunteers from the Philippines chapter unload the bags of rice and living supplies and place them in front of the Crescent City Hall, getting ready for epidemic relief distribution. This time is to help scavengers who used to live around the garbage mountain in Payatus. 
When there is no food at home, we would go to the restaurant to look through the trash can to find the leftover food that people discarded. We take it home and wash it four times, then we eat it after reheating. Affected by the pandemic, this garbage mountain was closed. Nearly a thousand households have been affected. Volunteers send them living supplies. Thank you, Zhiji, for sending the supplies to us so we don't have to pick up the leftover food again. I hope you can continue to help us until Christmas, because Christmas is the most important holiday in the year for us. I trust that with your help, we can have a nice festive season. Besides assisting scavengers, the visually impaired who rely on massage for their livelihoods also have no income due to social control measures. During the pandemic, Filippi only earned 100 pesos a day, which makes it impossible to make and miss. These materials are essential to our daily lives. It helps a lot. At least I don't have to spend any more money to buy rice and food. If I have income, I can pay for other expenses. Thanks God, after the pandemic eased, we finally start working again. At least my regular customers come back so I can make some money every day. And now with Cici's material assistance, I do not have to worry about food. Cici provided supplies and the city government rented buses to take the visually impaired back home, hoping that everyone will return to their normal lives as soon as possible. Cici Australia chapter has been continuously providing emergency assistance scholarships and free dental clinics in New South Wales for 25 years. These loving deeds have gained the support of the local government, which gave funds to purchase food for residents in need. <laughs> Knocking on the door and greeting one another, volunteers are here to bring handmade masks to people. Wear it like this. And when you wash it, put the mask under the sun and dry it. This way, it's safer to wear it when you go outside. We'll give you two masks, okay? okay. Uh -huh. Hello, we are from Ziji, and we are here to give you food and warmth. Many seniors aren't able to pay rent, therefore they have requested to live at public housing. Both Danya Su and her friend often work together, distributing supplies to seniors in need. In the community here, most people are old, so while I'm here to help, I feel grateful and happy. Yes, we distribute to many people here, and the residents here are very thankful to you. Every month, you provide us with supplies and warmth. Thank you for your care. These everyday supplies are really suitable and needed by us. Thank you very much. Ziji Australia chapter continued to care for the disadvantaged during the pandemic, as the local Eastwood government supported the cause for 10,000 Australian dollars. After packing living and food supplies, volunteers set out to make other people stay better. Wally and Ziji Hospital collaborate with National Applied Research Laboratories, creating an intelligent medicine chest, which also reduces medicine waste. The invention was recognized at the 18th Inno Award Award Ceremony. Patients with chronic disease or senior patients must take long-term medicine, though there might be situations like this. Many pills have similar colors and appearance, so when we collect medicine and bring it back, if I accidentally mix them together, it's hard for me to distinguish them. In Taiwan, 193 metric tons of medicine are wasted due to patients forgetting to take their prescriptions on time or taking in the wrong medicine. The waste of medicine is valued about the loss of 60 billion NT dollars. In order to stop medicine waste, Hualien Ziji Hospital invented an intelligent medicine chest, combining the physical form of a medicine chest with the technology of IoT with a simple insert of a health insurance card. The doctor can identify patients through a video call and activate the medicine chest. Many patients who use medicine for chronic diseases will store their medicine in their homes. And the environment may not be ideal to store medicine. So we thought, if we could provide a package that can be customized, it would be better and safer for patients to use medicine we provide. We will combine with an app, so if the patient didn't take the medicine, we'll notify him through the app. We can even notify their family members in the line group or notify their caregiver and pharmacist that the patient hasn't taken their medicine yet. The Intelligent Medicine Chest has been recognized by Inno Award as the creators have applied for a patent. 
In the future, the medicine chest can be applied to Taiwan's medicine delivery system, assisting more patients in taking medicine on time. Master Zheng Yan went to Maoli and met County Magistrate Su Yao Chang, who thanked Zhiji pandemic prevention efforts for migrant workers. Xu donated to Zhiji's vaccine fund. Take a look. The Cixi family warmly welcomed the master arriving in Maoli. She carefully looked at the nooks of Dharma learning and environmental friendly artworks one by one, admiring volunteers' skillful hands. <laughs> Volunteers shared with the master that recycling duties and vegetarianism promotion as they cooked vegetarian food at the construction site of San Yitzhi Chinese Medicine Hospital. Everyone takes turns to cook a vegetarian food, making the construction workers eat happily. Apart from caring for the residents, volunteers also cared for Dharma family. 80-year-old Cixi volunteer Pan Wu Huo was injured in an accident many years ago and had limited mobility. His wife took care of him. Volunteers helped him install a stair lift. Now he can go down from the second floor and go out to bathe in the sun. Thank you, Master. The master went to Miao Li as the county magistrate Xu Yao Chang led the county government officials to visit her. During May and June, there was a cluster COVID infection among migrant workers in Miao Li. Taichung Cixi Hospital fully supported the rapid screening. Superintendent Jian, Deputy Superintendent Zhuang, and the medical team come to Miao Li, setting up several points to do COVID screening in the communities. County magistrate Xu Yao Chang also made a special donation in response to Cixi's vaccine fund. For the good and kind thoughts, we have to give affirmation. I hope everyone will join together to cultivate a Bodhisattva's heart. Everyone shows the love to protect Taiwan citizens. The master expressed that everyone will cherish life and make good use of their talent to contribute to the community. Master Zheng Yan visited Maoli Zhiji grounds and praised the volunteers' dedication, which turned a vacant land filled with garbage into a garden with hundreds of Indian gooseberry trees. Let's take a look at this new garden. The unused vacant land has accumulated a large amount of waste and turned into a garbage mountain. More than 350 volunteers mobilized to clean the garbage. After 40-some days, this land was cleaned up, then we started planting trees. The trees planted here in the Holy Fruit Garden are Indian gooseberry. In the Buddhist scriptures, it is called Amala. The Holy Fruit Garden created by Luo Hanyuan was planted with hundreds of Indian gooseberry trees. Spring enzymes, weeding, and fertilizing. Retired teacher Huan Jingwei and his wife Su Cai Yun were attracted by the beautiful scenery when they went for a walk in the park. I do it happily. It seems that I have a goal in life after retirement. Treating the fruit garden as home, Huan Jingwei is a happy gardener. He takes care of the garden even during wind and rain. If an Indian gooseberry tree falls sideways, we need to correct it and tie it up immediately. Otherwise, if we wait until the rain stops and the soil dries out, the root will break if we correct it. So I must come here even in typhoon days and rainy days. Lin Zihong, who is the new Bodhisattva living nearby, was moved by this. It used to be a trash mountain here, because I usually walked here. The snakes all ran out. The volunteers really contributed a lot. It's worth us learning. The team worked together to take care of the Holy Fruit Garden. The master visited Mel Li, affirming everyone's hard work. As long as there is an aspiration, beautifying the environment and recruiting bodhisattvas is not something difficult to achieve. In Kaohsiung Hunei District, student Lil, who is now a nursing school student, has been under the care of Zhiji volunteers since her father went to prison due to drunk driving. 
Her grandfather was too old to take care of her. Now the little girl has grown into a mature college student. As she takes care of her father, she also hopes to contribute to the nursing profession in the future. Take a look. Attaching flowers onto the recipient's clothes, at this very moment, some arrived yearly to receive awards, and some awaited 10 years for an award. When I was in middle school, I didn't like going to school, and I thought of going to work after I graduate. But under the care of sister aunties and uncles, I'm glad that I kept on studying, and through that I met many friends and learned new skills. I saw her growth and change. Though she was a bit confused during middle school, we helped and brought her back onto the right track. Since fifth grade, volunteers accompany student Liu for 11 years. Now that she has grown up, she studies at a nursing department during daytime and takes care of her father at a hospital during nighttime. I want to get a nursing license so I can help more people. I can also help my father if he feels uncomfortable in the future. Student Li is a top student at NCKU. As he studies hard and receives good grades, he's here to receive the scholarship award. Funders have accompanied the Li family since student Li was little. I'm really thankful to Zhiji for all the help during the years. It has reduced the economic burdens of our family. Every time when volunteers visit us, we are like a family. Everyone has a great time talking to each other. In the past, my son was an introvert, but after talking to Zhiji sisters, he began to open himself up more. When I met him the second time, he called me an auntie. And this tiny act of care has really moved me. Though the road to pursue an education is tough for many, these students face their issues bravely. From elementary school to college students, the award recipients worked hard to achieve their dreams. Recently, the Taiwan Foundation for Rare Disorders held a scholarship presentation ceremony to encourage students with rare disorders not to be afraid of diseases and hardship. They can still live a brilliant life. Among them, 11-year-old Xiao Xuan was awarded a scholarship for excellent grades. Although she was born with chronic childhood cerebral sclerosis, she hasn't given up any learning possibility. The 11-year-old girl, who weighs 23 kilograms, was walking forward with her mother's support. No matter how hard every step is, the mother has only happiness. She needs to take a rest after walking about 50 meters. Sometimes I would feel grateful to her. I would tell myself that whose daughter can allow her parents to cuddle for a lifetime? Nope, except for my daughter. It is the strength of being a mother that drove her to move forward. Her daughter was diagnosed with chronic cerebral sclerosis when she was four months old. She also suffers from developmental delay and even her eyes couldn't focus. Just move your eyes slowly. Don't move your head, just the eyes. She moves very quick, and her head always arrives first. And the action of her younger brother can make her laugh. And this family also experiences the bitterness and sweetness of rare disorders. The 12-year-old Xiao Li, together with his father and his younger sister, was born with osteogenesis imperfecta, which is commonly called glass doll. Their bones will break easily. When his bones are broken, normally he will endure the pain and tie it up, then go straight to take part in the competition. We usually play the violin with the little finger straightened, but I would slightly curve my finger like this so it won't be painful. I practice playing violin because I can sit. Using music to infuse lives with passion, more than 350 outstanding students with rare disorders were awarded prizes including academic, friendly, seriousness and responsible one by one. They tell everyone with actions that, although their bodies have disabilities, it cannot stop their desire from pursuing dreams. The COVID pandemic has severely hit the economy and all walks of life are facing a test of survival. Physically and mentally disabled workers have been especially hard hit. Today, we take you to Caring Field in Jianghua, which mainly grows figs along with seasonal fruits and vegetables. A total of 12 special employees are employed here. The pandemic caused a 70% drop in revenue. Let's take a look. Hello. 
那咱们啊笑笑，我再帮我收，挂机乌鸦，你好，你好，你好，我是帅哥，还是要你停单啊呀？加加无用着，哎、欸，一百。那我用，我佫用一家你看，我拢用一点仔尔、啊，我拢用伫边仔食，安尼有啊？袂袂使袂使。来，佫行，佫向前走，我佫用。向前走，佫无啊啦。哎，袂无啊，一直持续。I continue to teach them and then confirm the lesson and help them solve problems. We do it step by step and have been doing it for about 20 years. 哎，让我开，让我开，让我开，让我开。哎，哎。这是那个蚯蚓土，可以改善土壤的哈，然后而且没有味道。我干了，多得了。上下都要喷到。I must spray it up and down. The black smoke is to kill insect pests. 还可以把它把它用死掉。Because of the pandemic, guests can't come in. We'll do it twice a week. We use organic methods to prevent pests and disease. 如果那是无喷到。If I didn't spray well, the pests and disease will kill our plants and I couldn't bear it. Earthworm farming methods and enzyme farming methods are to restore the land and also make the fruits we eat healthier and reduce the burden on the environment. I really like working here. It's nice to work with friends. They are really limited in what they can do because of their mental challenges. They also need a lot of care to be able to do this farming. They are some who have problems with small muscles in their hands. Sometimes when they put on stickers or lock the bottle, there will be some issues. At the beginning, we mainly focused on crops, but because crops have limited sales channels, we later developed some DIY items which can be sold for a long time. The pandemic led our performance to decline, but our core value should not be this. Are these children happy here? Is it safe? Can it really help their families solve the difficulties and help the society overcome difficulties? I believe that it does. No matter what kind of test we face in the future, we'll go forward courageously. We will keep working hard and won't stop because of the pandemic. Have you ever had a medical dispute? The most common dispute is caused by poor communication. While people are eager to know the condition, doctors may not be able to find the cause of the disease, which may lead to a crack in the patient-doctor relationship. Both Hualien Zhiji Hospital and Taipei Zhiji Hospital have set up a care team to help when patients are emotionally unstable. Rapid reporting of disputes along with thoughtfully listening and careful explanation can frequently be used to calm a patient's uneasy heart and reduce medical disputes. We leave you with these images. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.